So uh, since my very early childhood, uh, my mind has always been kind of transfixed and focused on the future. Um, and I put everything of, of what I was thinking about the future in drawings. Uh, if you don't understand what it is, this is my drawing of planet Earth with some spaceships orbiting around it. So I've always been this absent-minded kid uh, that was dreaming about all kinds of things and um, you know, things like space exploration, um, building rockets. This is what well, it looks like a rocket that I've used to draw. So I was always thinking about, you know, what could the future be? Uh, you know, how can we make it better and what's going to happen to it? And as I grew up, um, I kind of started realizing that I was just a kid in a small town in Bulgaria and my chances of doing something big and significant are, let's say, quite small. But I didn't give up. Um, I continued um, kind of experimenting with things. So when I entered teenage, I wanted to find my vocation, find the thing that really, really, really makes me want to commit my professional life to, find the niche, the the industry, something that would let me give a big contribution to the world or something that would make my you know, life matter. So it wasn't about money or it wasn't about you know, uh, fame and everything. It was basically kind of finding you know, my fulfillment, you know, finding my place on this planet. And I tried all kinds of things. Um, I tried, first I wanted to really be really good at uh, programming, you know, become an expert in certain technology. Then I wanted to build you know, all kinds of web applications, mobile applications, and whatnot. Uh, at some point, I was also looking at things like biotechnology and like you know, human enhancement, transhumanism, and all that. And I said, okay, you know, I'm trying all these things, but every try, every time I tried something, every time I tried something, there were two big problems. It was either too far fetched. Basically, it was impossible at this time, or just you know, just something imaginary out of science fiction. And the second thing was that if I tried something more realistic, there is there's always been somebody who already have done it. You know, there's always uh, always been somebody out there who have done the thing that I wanted to do. You know, that I mean, I know that I won't make you know computers or the next Microsoft or something like that. So I was just some kid trying to you know do something that makes me think, but there's always somebody else who had already had that idea, you know, they already walked the road, they already made their achievements. But there was a pattern in all the things I tried out. Um, I, I was always interested in technology and science, so I tried to stick with it. And when I entered university, I s decided to, you know, do technology, do computer science, because that's the thing that really, you know, wants me to experiment with things. And Maybe this is the vocation, this is the thing I want to do. And at some point, like in my first, second year, I learned about those, uh, you know, big entrepreneurship, big shots of entre uh, entrepreneurship, you know, the guys who are the heads of the big technology companies out there, you know, who are changing the world, you know, launching rockets, you know, this guy who launches rockets, and he probably stole my designs, right, when I was a kid. So I said, you know, I probably want to be like those guys. They're doing the same thing I want to do. You know, they're building rockets. They're changing the world to technology. So I want to be like those guys. And I realized, okay, well, I should probably also start a company because, you know, that's what entrepreneurs do and everything. And I said, okay, I'm going to start a company. And I also kind of figured it out because I was wanting to do my thing and you know, getting into a company and climbing the corporate ladder wasn't really like doing your thing. It's mostly listening to your boss and, you know, trying to do what it does. So I said that that will slow me down. I want to, you know, I want to make a business. And I decided to make a business when I graduated. Um, and what's the most important thing you need to have when you start a business? Sorry? A crew. That's right. You need people. You need people you want to rely on. You want to find somebody who believe in your mission, somebody who won't leave you when things get, or get rough or somebody who won't cheat on you, somebody you can rely on. And I was extremely lucky, very, very lucky to find those people when I was at the university. 
I found those people and they said, you know, guys, let's do a business. Let's do technology. Let's change the world. Let's do, you know, something big. So we started a business and we said, okay, great. Now we have, great, we have a business now. Let's, um, I don't know, we're, you know, self-made, you know, entrepreneurs. We're going to be millionaires, blah, 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 you know, all that stuff. Well, I want you to remember three things. When you start the business straight out of college with zero experience, there there really some some things you need to kind of knowledge. First of all, you have no experience. And at this point, it's you know, most people have difficulty finding an internship, a job. And you're trying and you're going there, you know, to company and say, I want to, you know, I want to do your one hundred thousand dollar software project. Give me your software project, I'll do it. And they're like, Are you joking? I mean, they want to talk to your manager. I said, I what do you mean my manager? I mean, I'm I'm the founder of the company. Okay, said, you know, get out. So we, we had we had things like that, um, and basically, even if you're very smart, I mean, you're not applying for a job. You're trying to get a project, so nobody's going to look at your CV. They're going to look at your experience. They're going to look, you know, what industry you should look for and all that. And we had no experience, so it, it was kind of sad, um, and it was very painful. We had basically we started off without any experience, without without any funding, without any mentorship. We just started a business, and we said, you know. Probably we won't be doing the things we want to do. We won't be doing big technology. We just have to make money. We just have to survive. So we became a software outsourcing company. We just started doing software because that's what we were good at. That's what we wanted to do. So we just started working in order to survive. And we started off in a small room uh, next to our campus. And we moved to Sofia in a classroom. We stayed in a classroom for quite a while. Our company grew quite a bit. But I was extremely unhappy. I was extremely unhappy because I wasn't doing the thing I wanted to do. I was writing software. I mean, we're one of the hundreds and thousands of software companies out there in the world. We weren't doing anything special. And the moment we had enough funding to sustain ourselves, you know, not to die of starvation after paying off salaries, we actually started experimenting with things, you know, trying to find the thing that matters for us. And we tried all kinds of things. We tried uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, sports analytics. Uh, I don't know. I can probably I can probably make a separate TED talk about all the things that didn't work out that we tried and failed miserably. But then, then came AI, and we actually also you know tried some things, and we kind of they gave us at least you know prizes for trying you know like. You, know, good, you guys are trying, you know, keep going, right? But then came AI, and things changed it completely because what the difference between AI and other emerging technologies and industries is that it makes sense. Out from the very beginning, even if you don't know anything about AI, if you've, if you've, if you've only heard of it, you can think of an application of it that can, that can actually solve a problem, and sometimes it can solve a huge problem. AI is a field that is just emerging. Basically, it's an emerging technology that's, that's, I mean, it's not emerging. I mean, it's been around for, from the, uh, the 1960s, but now it's being commercialized, right? So it will become part of our lives very soon. And all of us will have to do, you know, we know something about AI. So it was just the thing I was looking for. You know, it made sense to me. And it's just something I, you know, this is something that's just becoming big and I can probably make my contribution to the world and actually solve a big problem. So what did we do in order to you know, make this possible? Well, we invested, in the last few months, we invested over $50,000, which is, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot of money, but for a company that's our size and our age, a small company that's around two years old, that's a lot of money. We basically invested everything in order to make AI possible, to make the transition between an outsourcing company and AI. What did we do? Well, we basically invested in hardware we bought hardware because you know want to make production ready ai you need pretty good hardware we actually uh, trained our best engineers we trained our best engineers we said you know you guys won't be making outsourcing anymore you won't be writing software for somebody else you will be learning you know how to do artificial intelligence so we invested in our people we invested in everything that was you know basically our company our branding everything that could make us make us an ai company and today i can probably announced that Centrida is the first AI company, AI as a service company in Bulgaria. And um, 
you know, when we reach that point, um, I want to kind of take a step back and think about um, think about yourselves. So, you know, when I started doing these things, I said, all right, I want to try things out. You know, I want to experiment. And basically, that's that's how you start. You start experimenting. You never know where you're going to finish, right? But you always search for that thing that really, really matters. It doesn't matter if you're doing business, if you're doing, uh, you know, sports. You just have to keep going. And you have to believe that one day you'll find the thing that will let you do a big contribution to the world. Thank you.